Hey there, Alberto. How's it going? Thank you for being willing to do a critique. Um, thank you for being a patron as well. I've assembled some of your work here, and I have a few suggestions for you moving forward. Um, things that you can improve uh, and some practices to implement uh, in order to kind of get you to the next level. Um, and so what I see mainly, there's, there's two major observations that I can infer, basically, by looking at your work. And one of them is that the drawing area that you use, especially through looking, looking through some of your physical sketches done with ink, that the, the drawing area that you use is, is too small, right? Or, or is in a, a fairly small uh, area, if not too small. Um, and, and that's something that, that comes up a few places in your work here, uh, alongside perhaps a behavioral tendency to uh, get almost, I, I'll, I'll say claustrophobic in the framing of your characters, which is really, in a way, uh, you could say, harshly, a crutch uh, that you kind of lean on when you don't wish to draw the rest of the character, right? Uh, so for something like this, or the Barda, um, only seeing sort of those points of interest, but not allowing us to see sort of some context of the rest of the image. And even with the ones on the bottom here, and, and in general, what I saw was a lack of sort of the lower half of the body or characters in any kind of situation that wasn't necessarily a, uh, a kind of a portrait or at, at most sort of a, a bust like this with, with some lower half. And I'm not sure if that's actually just uh, from the cropping of your website uh, or if it's really that you've just drawn things specifically in this size. Uh, so that's one suggestion that I would make for you is to uh, size up the canvas or, or area that you're drawing or, or get a much larger or significantly larger sketchbook and make sure that you're drawing with your whole arm, right, including your shoulder. You can still move and articulate your wrist and maybe for some smaller detail lines, use exclusive your, exclusively your wrist. But uh, overall, I want you to make sure that you're, you're drawing just larger, right? You have more control that way. Um, so that's one inference that I can make. And the second is that overall, the work that you're doing, the initial sketches that you're making, right, are all consisting of flat shapes. And that I also confirmed by looking at some of your your physical sketches, um, because it, there's sort of a lack of dimensionality, right? And consistency, uh, and consistency. I know you mentioned visual consistency, but when I say consistency, I mean um, as far as like where an eye lands on a on the physical space. So if the if you have kind of the sphere of a skull here. <clears throat> where that that eye lands if this was an actual 3d sphere right like if the eye line was kind of coming across here then that means that you know one of these eyes is in the in the wrong place so that's kind of the consistency i'm, I'm talking about uh same with something here you know you have a portrait of a of a person and and i i uh understand the attempt here to make sort of a a high cheekbone and a sort of sucked in uh, mouth area, right? Sort of a frail one and then a, a pointed chin. However, most uh, skulls, and even if that was a, a shadow there, if you added the line that I just made here and, and added a shadow, it wouldn't be the worst thing. Um, but just the actual dimension of the skull is is something that's that's kind of important. Um, human faces overall are, are uh, and and the human anatomy in general are, are very good touchstones for uh, your artistic ability. And even if it's not something that you, like, like say you are drawing uh, cartoon bears or something, and or, or <clears throat> excuse me, a, you know, a anthropomorphic car, uh, understanding human anatomy is a great way to further your artistic ability, uh, specifically because of how used to it we are, how complex it is, and how uh, how much on a biological level we respond to seeing other humans. We're used to them, and so when something looks off, it's very 
easy to understand as humans because it's universal. All of us, you know, no matter who likes cars or who likes bears, uh, everyone knows and understands what a human looks like and should look like to on a certain level, right? And so, of course, from there, there's areas where you can kind of move away and, and add stylization and everything. Um, but one of the other suggestions that I'd like to make for you is to uh, practice human anatomy a lot more and do so at a scale where you're able to get the full, uh, the full human body in, right? So you're, we're actually including legs and everything. Um, and this is kind of, so going back to that idea of the flat shapes, right? What I'm noticing a lot is that you start with shapes that are not constructed, right? And something that's really helpful with your practice of human anatomy is to find the, the basic 3D primitives, right? So the cubes, the cones, the cylinders, the spheres, and you know, add, adding contour lines and everything to make sure that they lay out in sort of a 3D way, right? So things things like this are would be good for you to, to practice a little bit more, just in general, human anatomy, um, and specifically the construction and the 3D shapes of, of human anatomy. What I notice uh, is that, so for something like this, well, this appears 3D, right? And that's because of the added dimension afterwards. There's a danger of adding a third dimension to something that was first a 3D shape, uh, because there's it's uh, it's almost skeuomorphic, right? So it's it almost looks like it was later on, you know, as an afterthought, decided that this would be appear 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 in 3D. Excuse me. So that's something I, I just want you to be be careful of. Um, and overall, uh, I'm. A note about color here, some of the color choices here are, are fairly basic. Um, when it comes to shading, I would just avoid, I think you did a good job here, this skin tone, the uh, the darker skin tone on Barda here is uh, a, a kind of a red or a uh, sort of a brown, uh, like a almost like a red multiply layer, which is great. However, I would be careful with using pure white as a shading uh, tool, especially because the way that surfaces act uh, it's very unlikely for this yellow and this blue and this red to all reflect the same color uh, because of the, having the same light source, right? So something to keep aware of. Even if you had your white shading on a another layer and uh, turn the opacity down, uh, to about 50%, that would be an improvement. However, just in general, like I said, better to shade with sort of that dark red on the skin and better to light with uh, a non-pure white or black uh, or gray because it just ends up uh, looking a little bit flat, right? Just those those lighting environments are very sterile. So overall, here's here's sort of a a grading scale for you. Um, and I, I mean this only from the standpoint, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see you improve and get better and, and sort of take the place where you're at right now, which is substantial. You've, you've made a lot of like to get where you are now takes a lot of time and work and there's no devaluing that at all. Um, but there's sort of a, a principle that I, I like to think of when it comes to art, which is like what you're, this sort of being the the produced work line, right? Like this is what you make. I'm kind of making this up a little bit, the, the visuals of this on the fly. So apologies if it's not super clear. So this is, this is the work that you put out, right? And then your skill level is over here. We'll say skill. Um, there's a danger sometimes to, uh, and of course up here is sort of like work that is highly detailed, realistic, uh, three-dimensional, right? All of those sort of the, the as, as pro as you can go, right? And, and here being very simple uh, work as far as the, the level of detail, um, you know, how, how stylized or, or simplistic it is, right? Um, sometimes it, there's kind of a, a tendency, especially as people are starting, to kind of overshoot what they're able to produce skill-wise, 
right? Uh, and so they they kind of go outside of their depth uh, and try and make something sort of like this, right? When their actual skill level is is about here, and they you know this is the thing that they make. Yeah, I don't I don't know about this chart so much, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, what's best, or what I like to see the most, is when someone practices work. Someone see someone improves their skill level and they practice in this tier up here, right? They practice uh, realistic human anatomy and, and perspective, things like that. They try and get their skills above a certain level. And then from there, they come back down to this point in order to make uh, finished work, right? And the key element there is confidence. You, If you are creating something at half your maximum output, you're going to be confident that what you're going to make is is good and, and right. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and maybe I'll make a video about that, sort of elaborating on that further a little bit down the line. Um, but I, I just want you to, to think along those lines instead of starting with very flat and 2D shapes or or just drawing sort of this way, right? Where you, you kind of start with the eye. Does this make sense? Um, in sort of a simple way, maybe this is kind of the way that you're you're starting right now. Um, instead of starting like that, start with understanding what the, the shapes are underneath. And that's, it's helpful to kind of do those things lightly. If you're, if you're drawing in pencil, uh, you know, sketching those things out lightly first before you kind of make a, an ink decision down the line. Or if you're just doing digital, it's great because then you can just lower the opacity of a sketch layer and draw over top of it later on. Um, but knowing sort of on a grid or, or the 3D planes of something is, is super helpful, right? So you go from here and then you're going, okay, well now I want to um, build out the rest of the face. And I know that there's sort of sockets for the eyes here, right? Just already you get a more consistent looking face. And of course, one of the, the biggest elements that will be helpful for you is time. So draw a lot more is, is one of the biggest things uh, but do specific and meaningful studies, right? So already this this face uh, is a marked improvement over this one because I couldn't have known, I'm, I'm not smart enough, I haven't drawn this particular, you know, new character um, enough times over to know exactly the coordinates of where the eyes are and how they should look sort of in this three-quarter view or perspective, right? But if I draw my guides ahead of time, and then mark sort of within the boundaries of those guides, the finished drawing is going to turn out a lot better. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you, Alberto. Uh, best to you in the future. Please keep drawing, draw a lot, and I look forward to seeing what you do. Hey there, Bento, how's it going? Thanks for being a patron and for being willing to have a critique. Um, I have assembled a little bit of your work here. And basically you were talking about in your form, uh, basically just kind of wanting to get uh, to a point where you're re-enjoying drawing, can understand kind of stagnating after a while, um, and wanted to just find some ways to, to sort of fix things up and, and improve and maybe break out of a rut that you may be in. Um, so right off the bat, a lot of your work here is really nice. Um, there's, you've got a good sort of foundation going. And the main thing that I want to talk to you about um, that that might be helpful with this uh, has to do with sort of where your, your strength is and what foot you're kind of putting a lot of your weight on and uh, what the other foot is, if you're not really familiar with it, and, and what you can do to sort of shift back onto that foot and in so doing, gaining some stability. Uh, that's that's a foot metaphor. That's a leg. That's a leg metaphor. That one's free. Um, so what I see a lot in your work here, which by the way, something like this this face here, really nicely inked and and put together. Um, and I have to say, from the standpoint of, uh, I'm not someone who's opposed to anime in the slightest. There's there's plenty of it that I enjoy. Um, there's a, a tendency for a lot of people who are sort of learning through. Uh, anime to make the wrong mistakes or uh, take a, a stylization feature of anime and kind of misconstrue it. However, you're still, you're doing a good job with some of the angles that you're drawing from, 
of uh, constructing things the right way, right? Like there's here has has a really nice um, skull and everything. There's a, a a very fine line between where a chin protrudes because it's larger and where maybe a, a cheek is coming back in or being kind of sucked back in there um, that I'd be a little bit wary of. But that's a, a small nitpick. Um, overall, like your your placement of features on sort of the skull, right, is definitely good. Um, you're, you've got very well socketed eyes here and everything. Um, here on the left is a, a transition I, I see you making into something that's a bit more uh, lineless, right? And so here there there are just a, a few places where uh, the construction and symmetry is maybe suffering a little bit, and that might be a detail that was in your maybe initial sketch for it but didn't come all the way through. And then I do see over here things like this character here, which at first I was thinking, you know, I'm not seeing too many legs from him. I wonder sort of how his his leg construction is. Um, but then you you put this in here, which is uh, I I think from what I saw a later uh, a later sketch or later drawing uh, than the one above here. And I think there was another one you sent along too. So you have a good understanding of the construction of these things, okay? So that right foot is construction. And when we're learning anatomy, learning to draw better, uh, especially with regards to anatomy, there's these two camps that we build from, right? They're, they're almost two different methods or, or schools of thought. Um, one of them being construction, which is sort of the accurate forms and layout of something, the things being the right shape, being in the right place. Um, and that's what happens when you sort of learn the Lego blocks that the, the human body is made up of and, and putting them in the right place. And so that's something you're showing a good, uh, a good understanding of in, some, in a drawing like this for the most part. Um, a few things like sort of just the 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 layout of the feet there very minor things to change uh to make it to make it good um but that other foot uh i'm drawing a, a foot revising a foot while talking about my foot metaphor is a gesture right and so in the opposite camp of of legos and correctness and and uh, volume and form, right, is the idea of gesture, which is very, um, it's free flowing, it's capturing the, the movement and flow, um, the, the animation, as it were, um, you're getting a lot of curves and a lot of balance, right, with when you're, you're putting an emphasis on gesture, right? Um, a lot of life drawing focuses on gesture, uh, a lot of very quick uh, exercises where you're you're only giving yourself maybe a few uh, seconds, if not like a, a minute or two, to sort of capture the the flow and essence of a, of a person. Um, and what I think will benefit you when it comes to gesture is it'll provide you with a little bit more um, of that movement and flow and maybe a line of action in places. Um, so looking at a at a image like this, right? Obviously, our, our character is not static at all. He's, he's either mid-jump or free-flowing, right? Um, but there are a lot of places where if you're just following the, you know, a, a forearm is a Lego brick that is like this, right? You, you kind of, it's easy to follow into, fall into a trap where your movement and your characters are very robotic, right? And, and also in the sense of, you know, a robot being made up of, of hard surface objects. Um, in most cases, however, with with gesture, you you figure things out quickly. More more so for, along the lines of you know where are sort of the curves of an arm and stuff, right? And and you start to kind of build a character off of that. And so I'll, I'll do just a quick kind of thing here. Which anytime I'm kind of drawing over, there's going to be a concession to what's already on the page, and so it won't be perfect. Um, but there's a, a nice balance to be struck between construction and gesture because you can kind of move around these curves, right? And and you take something like this and you, you kind of push the, the body to to arc forward a little bit more and, and push the chest out and arch the, the back a little bit too. Uh, and maybe the the head is maybe more pointed up and, and maybe be for the, the health of the, the pose, maybe the eyes are kind of closed and he's sort of more blissful and 
and upward looking, right? It's just an idea there, kind of more like that. Um, and you, you kind of, you find things like the, the curve of this arm here. A, a lot of life drawing, uh, the, the exercise I'm sort of recommending for you where you, you're looking at one image after another and just capturing the basic uh, form and, and figure of, of a character um, is, and I should say figure drawing uh, with a little bit more gesture drawing, is almost like a stick figure, uh, but instead of very stiff, uh, straight lines, you're actually capturing the, the sort of curves, right? And, and a lot of the body is about balance and S's and sort of move and, and movement and flow. Um, so where something like this has a lot of sort of movement because of the, the arch of the, the neck and sort of the pushing forward, almost like the, the, the laughter or the, you know, this expression that he's giving is very like forward moving, right? There's a lot to, to kind of learn from a character who is, you know, one who is kind of puffing their chest out like this, right? And and is super confident. And uh, the overall arc of their body is, is pushing forward versus one who's very regressive and, and maybe mopey and sad and their shoulders are, are slumped down and, and doing something like that, right? Very, this is overly simply simplifying. That's not necessarily how a gesture drawing would look. Um, but if you do that and you, you kind of, if you go online, there's a few uh, sites that will sort of generate or, or flash images to you for a set amount of time. You can mark them down to like a minute or so at a time. And just very quickly, you start to learn, okay, there's no way to draw all of the the person at once. Um, but if you're making a, a very basic, um, so you, you kind of do a line of the, let's start over with our guy here. Um, you're gonna do the line of the face, right? The direction that it's pointing is sort of where that that line goes to. Um, you can what I like to do is is kind of set up a the shoulder and hip lines like that. You can use kind of some circles on either end to designate where that's gonna go. And, and if a larger circle is here and a smaller one over here, then you know this shoulder is kind of closer to you. And then you can the the arms kind of have their own S like this that that. You know, you, you get to the middle joint there. And a lot of times you won't be very accurate. You, obviously, you're you're not looking for construction here. You're looking for movement. And so it's, it's not so much, did I make sure that that leg is long enough in this case? It's, you know, did I, did I capture the idea of him falling well enough, right? So that's, you know, especially when they're on the ground, it's nice to do a sort of a, a ground plane and and lay out where the feet are. Um, but basically, this is all you're really going to capture. And from there, you can, if you optionally want to, you can build sort of the head on and, and maybe, you know, things like the, the arms, and then you can start to add construction onto this, right, and add construction that serves the flow and, and curving of the, the structure, okay. Um, so hopefully, that's helpful for you. Uh, and I think, Moving a little bit beyond, not, of course, you know, not saying you have to change, not draw anime or anything like that, but just looking for sources of inspiration outside of anime only because there are a lot of opportunities. There's, it, I mean, it completely depends, right? You've got some very dynamic looking poses and animation sometimes, but there is a tendency also uh, to go for the quick or go for the, the cheap or the economical to animate. Uh, poses. So a lot of times you'll get side and profile views and, and things like that. And uh, try and aim for for some more three quarter views and things that are just try rotating this head around, you know, like aim for a, you know, a head that's kind of doing this or a head that you're looking at from this angle here. And it might be uncomfortable, right? Um, but the, the more we kind of break out of what we're used to with especially the angle that we're looking at things, the the looser will be and the, and the stronger our drawing will be and the less, you know, frozen or frustrated we'll get when, when things change. Okay, thanks a lot. I uh, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care, Bento.